You have tuned in to Science Isn't Scary here at the Fayette County Public Library. And I'm Miss Lisa today, and we are going to talk about some rocks. All right, and we're going to talk about weathering. Do you know what weathering is? Weathering is a process where rocks this size and even bigger, like big boulders, eventually over many, many, many years turn into little rocks like pebbles or even like sand. Now, how in the world does that happen, boys and girls? How do rocks go from something rather large to something rather small? Well, like I said, the process is weathering. And weathering is when nature takes rocks and turns them into little pebbles and into dust and into sand and it does it in several ways it might take ice to freeze a rock and then unfreeze it where it pushes out and it breaks in half it may take pressure it may take heat it may take water all of these different things even wind sometimes can break a rock into little pieces and weather it down until you get pebbles and sand take a look at this rock that i found one time while i was walking see that indentation right there there's actually two i can imagine that this was sitting somewhere and the rain was dripping and dripping and dripping right here in this same spot year after year after year and it ate it away or it wore it away it weathered the rock away maybe when you're out walking sometimes you'll have find a rock that may even have a hole through the center of it how did that happen well probably through weathering whether it was the wind or the sun or the sand or the the, the water or the ice or the pressure that all those things will weather a rock so I have a really thin rock right here and I'm going to weather it with pressure now pressure can happen in several ways you can have humans that might walk on it or animals that walk on it to break it up or sometimes rocks are buried deep down inside the earth and all of the layers of rock that are on top of the rock give it such pressure that it breaks the rock apart so I'm going to use my hammer as pressure and here is this rock and if we use pressure on the rock you can see that it turns into little tiny pieces even some sand okay and so over time that is what happens to rocks they get weathered down into little tiny excuse me into little tiny pieces now sometimes when you're out walking you may find rounded rocks okay rocks that are rounded sometimes when you break them open or turn them over you will find a surprise this is called a geode see all those pretty crystals inside this one is called an agate where those crystals have filled up and have left color behind now what happens with both of these types of rocks is that deep down in the earth there is a hole or a cavity and the sides of the rocks are creates a wall and the rain that falls down from the sky goes into the ground down into all the layers of bedrock and finds this empty little hole now as that rain falls down into that cavity it is picking up silica okay and that is what leaves the crystals behind so that rainwater comes down fills up that little hole and then over time lots and lots of years the crystals are left behind because the water evaporates out so as the water evaporates out the crystals are left behind and if it doesn't fill all the way up you get a geode some geodes are much prettier than this one I also have this geode which is sort of the white crystal and this one sort of the black but you will also find one some crystals that are purple and some are red there are really really pretty ones now with agates you also have that hole in the ground that empty cavity where the rainwater comes in and the silica fills up that whole hole so it doesn't leave a lot of chance for evaporation and that silica is going to leave behind the beautiful crystals with different colors and so this one is sort of an orange this one is an agate slice that is pink and gray i also have one that is blue and gray and here's one that is sort of gray and green and sort of gold. I have another one that is blue. 
Now, what I read is that these agate slices, especially the blue ones, are actually sort of chemically made. You're never going to actually find one of these in the ground. Some scientist or gemologist has dyed it blue, but you will find those other colors naturally. You won't find an actual slice, boys and girls, out on a walk. You're not going to find a slice because you have to go to a gem store to find these. But you might find a rounded rock like this, and if you get a help of an adult, you might be able to crack it open and see if you find a geode or an agate. Now, today I am going to show you how to make your own geodes and agates. There are two different little science experiments that you can do to easily make these. Let's start off by making the agate. Okay, and so what you're going to want to do is have some Jolly Ranchers and you're going to want to peel them and put them inside a little bag and I've double bagged it just so the pieces don't go flying everywhere. But you are going to want to take some pressure to, this, um, to your Jolly Ranchers and break them up so that you have little crystals of Jolly Ranchers. Now, any kind of candy, boys and girls, will do, but the Jolly Ranchers are see-through, okay? They're sort of clear. And what you're going to get when you're done is something that's going to look like this. So how do you make that? So you have all your little weathered pieces of rock, Jolly Ranchers. And remember, you need to have a hole. You need to have a cavity that has edges to it. So you're going to take a piece of foil, think about how big you want, and you're just going to roll those edges. Try to keep the bottom nice and smooth. Roll those edges up until you get sort of a circle. And you're going to want to make sure that your foil is sort of sticking up to create that edge, create a lip so that um, the little crystals don't fall out. So you're going to make this little boat or this little bowl. Now before you put those crystals in, you're going to want to have some baking spray and just spray it just a little bit so it doesn't stick. Then you're going to take all your little crystals that you broke up, all your little pieces of your Jolly Rancher, and put it in your little bowl. Okay, I see a couple that didn't get broken up. I'm going to take those out. Let's take the little pieces and get those in there. Spread them out nice and neat. And then you're going to need to put this in the <laughs> oven. Okay. Now the oven needs to be at about 200 degrees. You only need to bake it for two to three minutes. So you need to watch it because you don't want it to burn. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put that in my oven. Okay. And we're going to watch that melt um, in a little bit. All right, we're going to let that be. While that is melting, let's make our geode. Okay, now remember a geode is a cavity that has the crystals in it. And so how can we do that? Well, what you're going to need are some eggshells, or you can use like bottle caps, milk jug caps, anything that is, has a nice solid wall that has an empty cavity. These are a couple that I made earlier this week. If you look in there, you can see all the crystals that are in this eggshell. Really sparkly and pretty. And then here I did one in a bottle cap. You can sort of see the crystals there. I don't think it looks quite as nice as in the eggshell, but you can decide what to do. So what you need is these eggshells. Dry them out, and then you're gonna take some glue, and you're just gonna put some glue inside each eggshell and you're going to take your finger and just smush it around so that the glue is all the way around the eggshell all on those walls because we're going to want crystals to grow there now how do we get the crystals to form we need to go to the grocery store and buy some alum this is a special kind of salt that you can find at the grocery store and Turned itself off or something. All right, it's still going. All right, so we're going to take this alum and we're going to sprinkle it inside the eggshell, and it should stick to your sides of your eggshells. Okay, that's not the only thing you have to do. Once that's done, you're going to want to go and get some hot water, not boiling water, but hot enough right out of the spigot, really hot water, and you're going to want to have several teaspoons of alum 
and you're going to put it in the water and you're going to stir it, stir it, stir it until that liquid becomes saturated. That means that nothing else is going to dissolve. Okay, keep stirring it, stirring it, stirring it. The more you put, the better it is. Because this is going to what, this is going to what be, oh goodness, I can't talk. This is what's going to help activate the other alum that's in the eggshells, okay? Now, to get the color, you're going to want to have some food coloring. So I'm going to make these geodes blue, what I made red before. I'm going to stir that in there. Try to dissolve all the alum that you can. And then you're going to want to spoon some into each of your eggshells. And remember, it's evaporation that causes the crystals. So you are going to want to wait um, at least 24 hours. Mine took two days. So you want to put some at the bottom, put some at the top. Yeah, you don't want to drown your eggshells, but you do want some in there because that's what will help make the color of the crystals. Once you have that all set up, set it somewhere where it will not be bumped and it will not be bothered. And within two days, you should start seeing crystals. If you don't, just sprinkle a little bit more of that into your eggshell and continue to watch it to evaporate. If you think you've put too much liquid in there, dump a little bit of it out, but I can guarantee that you are going to get some beautiful crystals. All right, let's go check on our agate. Should be about melted now. It is. It's really hot, so I need to be really careful. Okay. Now, you can see how it's all melted, and if I touch it, it's going to get really hot. And so, boys and girls, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you have an adult. Wait about five minutes before that cools, and then you're just going to simply peel the foil away from your candy, and you will have an edible agate. Okay, so you can actually eat your agate if you want. All right, boys and girls, today we've learned about agates and geodes. I hope you will try these two experiments at home. They're really simple and easy. And come back and see me again in two weeks for another really cool science experiment. Bye now.